the capacity for forgiveness as such is not an intrinsic part of human nature. We know that um, all sophisticated life, and it, this applies to primates as well as to humans, have conflict resolution techniques. Uh, you can call those appeasement. The Greeks, the ancient Greeks, have this concept of appeasement. I didn't do it, or if I did, it wasn't that important, or if it was that important, I feel bad about it. And you go through a gesture of submission and self-abasement, and you hope that somebody will forget the offense against them. Forgiveness as such only enters the world when we move from what is called a shame ethic to a guilt ethic. And a guilt ethic separates between the act and the person. The act was bad, but the person remains deep down, untarnished. And therefore, um, that, that sense of when I repent and make restitution and so on, I am capable not of just making you forget the whole thing or ignore it, but actually do this extraordinary act called forgiving, which appears really in human history with the story of Joseph and his brothers at the very end of Genesis. Um, um, his brothers have wanted to kill him. They sold him as a slave. And eventually he reconciles with them and forgives them. And fascinatingly, it's only after that that God forgives. He forgives the Israelites for the sin of the golden calf after the pleadings of Moses. So forgiveness has to do with a specific culture. It is one of the great contributions of the Judeo-Christian heritage to humankind. And it was Hannah Arendt who pointed out how very, very important forgiveness is because it is one of the very few things that breaks the hold of the past. It liberates us from this eternal consequence and the eternal echo of the bad things we've done in the past. It allows us to create a new world going forward. So I think some form of conflict resolution is universal. But this very specific form of forgiveness is one of the great gifts of the Judeo-Christian heritage to humankind.